As a landscape photographer, I enjoy spending my time in the outdoors, exploring and searching for images within nature. That could be an approaching storm, a fallen tree, or the vibrant colours from a beautiful sunrise. But whatever the subject, and whatever your reason for being out, I feel it's important to try new things, step outside of your comfort zone, and let your creativity take over. After receiving an invitation to try something a little bit different from a well-known photographer who happens to live in my neck of the woods, I couldn't turn it down. I met up with Andy Gray, whose photography I have been a fan of for a number of years, and I have often looked over his images with great admiration, as well as a lot of curiosity, as his work isn't exactly what you would call run-of-the-mill landscape photography. Yeah, right, uh, Not today, Tom. No? No, you can leave that at home. Seriously, no tripod? No tripod. Just think of the weight saving here and a half. Right, let's go. So good morning everybody. Today um, I'm on the Isle of Isle, Isle of Lindisfarne, is it? Oh, it's Lindisfarne. Lindisfarne, <laughs> holy island. Just, just Lindisfarne. I don't know where I am. We're in Northumberland and today I'm going to be doing some landscape photography with a twist, something a bit different. I'm with Andy Gray. If you don't know Andy Gray's work, I'll, I know I'll link to it in, in the show notes below. But yeah, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different where I hope to learn a lot. And hopefully everybody watching this will learn something new. And I have to say, I'm quite excited and also uncertain about what to expect from today. So if you're not familiar with Andy's work, he specializes in ICM or intentional camera movement, which is a technique that sees a weight with the tripod in favor of, well, intentional camera movements. Andy's images are abstract, ethereal, and dreamlike, which is everything I look for in an image but his methods used in the creation of these photographs very much fall into the artistic side of the photography spectrum, as his camera becomes much more like his paintbrush. So we're currently looking at this, uh, at this priory, and I have to say, like, as it stands now with the blue skies and the bright sunlight, oh, talking about bright sunlight, there we go, I would never shoot this. You know, I'd take a shot on my phone if it's nice and I wanted to, like a quick record shot or a holiday snap. But I would never think to photograph in this as, you know, a potential image that could either go in my gallery or, you know, whatever in a calendar or anything like that. So, as it stands, I'm a bit, I still can't quite visualize it, but this is, this is why Andy says, I've taken a straight shot of the Priory and I'll show you what I'm working with now, a rough composition. And yeah, and then we're gonna throw on some filters, we're gonna do some move Andy has a series of movements he's gonna teach me, which is like brush strokes with the camera. And what that should do is just really open up the scene, bring, you know, just transform it into another way of thinking, another way of seeing. And that is quite exciting because what that potentially could do is open up photography at times and places where you wouldn't normally do landscape photography. So I've got my straight shot, I've got my composition. Do we need filters now? Yes. Filters? Yep. Right, okay, cool, filters, let's do it. Andy explained to me that the shutter speed is the only variable we need to worry about here. So I attached my four stop ND filter, which would allow the preferred shutter speed of just over half a second when stopped down to F22. And it's this critical shutter speed of 0.6 seconds that would capture all of the motion within the image. So the movements had to be just right. So to give you an idea about movements, um, I, what I've been doing for this is I've been constantly moving my camera while shooting. And then Andy just said, look, um, why don't I show you some movements? I'll show you how I do it. And of course, being an expert, I was like, yes, please do. And so my technique was very kind of fluid and constantly moving, whereas Andy holds it still for a fraction of a second to get the, the initial exposure, which will almost give him, well, give him more of an outline, and then he whips the movement. So rather than fluid and flowing, he's very, like, uh, yeah, like 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 he's, he's whipping, like he whips the camera. Let me show you. So um, I'll show you what I was doing, uh, which is something like this. So 
So I'm just trying to get that movement. And yeah, some of the images look good, but um, as soon as I tried Andy's technique of movement, instantly it looked better, which means I have to shoot a hundred more images now. <laughs> and it's kind of more like, uh, let it go for a second and then, well not a second, let it go for a fraction of a second and then whip. So it's like, and that this looks so much better. Straight away it looks better. You've got shape, but you've also got texture. It's, And you can, oh yeah, this looks so much better already. Yeah. All right, I think, I'm, I think I can't keep shooting this. I think we've got it. <laughs> we've got it. Yeah. Um, so should we move on and shoot yep, something, shoot something else? else? All right, cool. Right. Well, um, so what I'm gonna do, uh, we're done here now with this location. I'm gonna put the image up on the image. God, I hope there's an image. <laughs> I'm gonna put whatever concoction, what yeah, whatever I've cooked up in the, in the edit suite. I'm going to put on screen now. I'm going to move on, maybe pick a second subject. Um, and yeah, see what happens. It's going to be interesting. I hope you enjoy, hope you enjoy the image. Because I have no idea what is about to come on screen. Not a clue. For a first attempt, I don't think this is too bad, but I have to be honest with you, it's not what I envisioned when on location shooting the scene. I actually pictured something softer and far less grungy. Moving on, we ventured up the coast a little and started to photograph Linda's farm castle. This scene felt much more obvious than the Priory, with its sweeping cobbled path winding its way to the iconic castle. The light was harsh and contrasty, which was actually perfect, as once again I pictured in my mind's eye exactly what I wanted, and this time the final image was a little closer to what I set out to achieve. I am much happier with this photograph. It's a little less complicated than the previous image and consists of two photographs, a straight shot of the castle blended with an upside down shot of the cobbles which adds texture to the otherwise blank sky. What I didn't expect were the cobbles to resemble a flock of birds passing through the sky. Well, at least that's what I see anyway. So after our initial shoot at the Priory and then we just moved up to the castle for a quick play, we've come down to the harbour. There's these lovely boats in this, uh, this nice sort of estuary or bay, but it's low tide so we've got the wet sand and the boats are reflecting. Now this is a whole different kind of game because I'm, I'm now shooting at 70 mil, whereas before I was shooting at like 16 or 20. So the movements are just tiny movements make big differences. But I'm quite excited by this scene here. What I'm capturing looks quite good but it's I started to lose the mindset of the ICM so to lose the mindset of Andy so I'm now seeing a traditional shot with a bit of movement thinking that looks nice and Andy's like no you know think about texture and adding this and adding things to the sky and how's it all going to piece together so I'm starting to think again outside of the box so I take my standard kind of shaky shot of the boats looks great but then I do a long sweeping movement where I get the horizontal lines and layers and I'm thinking that could be a part of the sky and it's all coming together, it's, it's difficult. You have to look at the world in a new way, but it's definitely good fun and worth, worth trying for sure. By now, and with the guidance of Andy, I was starting to get the hang of it. I think at the beginning I'd gone in too deep, too fast. I overcomplicated it with too many movements and too much influence from Andy's work I'd now started to dumb things down a little and take it easy with the ambitious abstract movements. Instead, I kept it simple, again with only two moves to create an abstract, yet easily recognisable scene that I think is actually my favourite of the three images. After a long morning, we went back to Andy's office where he shared his processing techniques and it was clear from spending time with him that he has a gift, a skill and a passion for what he does, 
which is to create truly unique and beautiful photographs using simple tools and techniques. And I would definitely encourage everybody out there to give this a try. Oh, oh dear me. <laughs> so today has been excellent. I have thoroughly enjoyed today. Um, Andy's been so helpful and just imparted so much wisdom and knowledge onto me so i'm excited to go home look at all the images i've captured today get them into lightroom and photoshop and start creating some of the image which um funnily enough you've already seen in this video so uh yeah if you are interested in this type of photography then uh, andy is definitely your man so i'm going to link to his stuff below um, he also does workshops and I think every Tuesday he does a live stream on YouTube where he creates these images, these wonderful pieces of art. So go and check that out. Everything's linked down below. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. So thank you so much for watching. For now, I'm going to go home and uh, probably have a nap because we had a 4am start this morning. Uh, which, by the way, was totally unnecessary because this type of photography you can do any time in the day. But yeah, there we go. So once again, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye for now.